man is hot, bring her on. Thank you very much. How are you all doing? Oh, beautiful. Oh, gosh. Welcome to the world famous comedy store at the Dunes. Are you ready to have a great time? Yeah! Oh, I don't even know if you can do better than that, but let's try it. Are you ready to have a good time? Yeah! Oh, you guys, this is going to be fun. Oh, hey, are there any native Californians here? Yeah! Oh, beautiful! Great. Well, I'm from California. I'm a native Californian, too. Big deal. And, uh, <laughs> no, but last weekend was like the turning point of my life because I was finally invited to my very first Hollywood party, and it was so neat. It was at my boyfriend and his wife's house, and <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I really was at this party, and it was fantastic. I mean, right when I walked in, this gorgeous stuck-up actor comes up to me. First thing the guy says, he says, well, um, uh, hey, baby, haven't you seen me in the movies? I said, well, you know, I don't know where to usually sit. And there were celebrities there, and it was fantastic. It kind of became like the Joan Rivers Dinosaur Talk Show. like a chewed up milk dad. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm such a bitch. I am. Mean, I, uh, 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 you better terrific audience. Please watch me tomorrow night. because No, Monday night because I'm going to have Prince on the show. And I love Prince because he's so gay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, grow up. Are you kidding? Prince is living proof that Johnny Mathis and Liberace had sex during the 50s. <laughs> Oh, Joan, we have the cutest little doctor here tonight, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Oh, you're kidding, Diana. Oh, I love Dr. Ruth. Oh, I watch her all the time. You know, ever since she's been on the air, the prizes at cucumbers have skyrocketed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ruth Westheimer.
special is from a young woman who wishes to remain anonymous. Okay, okay. Her name is Deborah Kelly. <laughs> years old and I have never ever made love to anybody. Please help. Okay, 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 okay. Deborah. Deborah. I want you to listen because I am going to ask you a very important question. Okay, okay. Are you ugly? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the funniest ladies I know, the Divine Museum, is Bette Midler. Oh, Bette's here? Oh, terrific. Can you believe the size of her bazoos? Are you, are you kidding? She could breastfeed everybody here. Yeah. Oh, well, hi, Holly, is it? I'll be right out. You see, before I go out on that stage, I've got to make sure these babies are pointing in the right direction.
of old Roger Dare. You must try to ignore that I look like a whore. Oh, what hay I've got to do, got to do with it. What hay I've got to do, got to do with it. What hay I've got to do, got to do with it. Why well, use a comb when well, a comb? Outside of Hong Kong, you've heard of Bruce Lee. Now, welcome to the stage, Ninja Kung Fu Comedy Master Charlie Laporte. Shows. He's originally from Wisconsin. Let's welcome a true American, Charlie Hill! Oh, 
you. Good evening. Like this some Indian humor for you now. One little, two little, three little whiteies, four little, five little, six little, seven little. Oh, you don't like that either, huh? People over there putting their tables in a circle. Some of you look like them wooden white people in my front yard. My name is Charlie Hill. I'm Oneida. We're from Wisconsin. We used to be from New York. We had a little real estate problem. Before I moved to Hollywood, I went to the Bureau of Indian Affairs School for Comedians. Take my land, please. Anyways, I hope I'm funny, otherwise next week I'll be home going B27. I-19. N-6. Originally moved out to Hollywood, I wanted to be an actor, and uh, things are going pretty good. I just got a part in the new Indian soap opera. One lamb to lose, so look for it. I just got the lead in the Robbie Benson story. Why do white guys always play Indians in the movies? I never could understand that. I seen Chuck Connors on the Late Show. Chuck Connors as Geronimo. Chuck Connors. Chuck is six foot five, blue eyes, brown hair, looked just like Geronimo, didn't he? Get them both together, you couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> hey man, that Indian looks like Chuck. I don't believe this. <laughs> Did you know when Apache Indians join the Air Force and become paratroopers, when they leave the plane, they yell, Chuck! Come on! <laughs> a little bit of trivia for you. I remember the first time I went for an audition in Hollywood, too. You know, I walked in the guy's office, you know, he says to me, you know, Charlie, baby, you look like you're right for the part, baby. You're an Indian, and you're, you're kind of smart, too. What I want you to do is look at the script, get the feel of it, and then tomorrow morning, I want you to come into my office. I want to see why you can grunt and crawl for me. You know, a little screen test? And say, look, I don't grunt. I don't crawl for anybody. You got that? Give you $5,000 a week. <laughs> Next day in the set, I'm going, Mazzola, corn goodness, Mazzola. I was thrilled, I called my mom. Hey, mom, this is Charlie. Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, I'm in the Mazzola spot. Yeah, I'm the second Indian behind the Italian wearing the headdress. Yeah, you can't miss it. Mazzola. It's a wonderful song. We sing it at all of our ceremonies. Mr. Mazzola Fest on Highway 29 this summer. I think that song's got everything in it, but people going like this. Hey, you know, I've never seen an Indian person ever do this in my life. I've seen drunk white people do that a lot. People don't know better. You know, group watching the movies. It starts out when you're in the Boy Scouts. Got Indian clubs in them. No Indians, but you got the expert with the Billy Jack t-shirt. All right, boys and girls, we're into the authentic Plains Indian dances like I learned in arts and crafts. <laughs> and like all Plains Indians, they get out the piano in the middle of the gymnasium. <laughs> got their cardboard headdresses. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. People don't realize some of these dances are religious expressions for native people. Like, what if I got my kids together and said, Hey, let's play Catholic! One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Thank you. Well, I'm just here to dispel the myth you might have about Indian people. Personally, I don't even like the name Indians because I don't have any relatives in Bombay or Calcutta. <laughs> Columbus gave us the name Indians because the man thought he was in India. I'm sure glad he wasn't looking for turkey. <laughs> well, 
Old Turkey's attack wagon should go. You know what it's like being discovered by someone who got lost? I mean, they sure give it, they make him a hero. He was just a boat person as far as I was concerned. And that's where it all started. The white man claimed America for his own. Hey, we discovered this land. There was nobody using it. That was the mentality. People were living there, but they discovered it. So using that kind of mentality, I seen a Porsche out in the parking lot and <laughs> nobody's using it. <laughs> hey, I discovered it, officer. <laughs> I wish history books were rewritten. You know what I like about history books? They told us that George Washington was the father of our country. We looked at this guy, he had high heels. Pedal pushers, wooden teeth, and a wig. Well, thanks, George. We're gonna live in the woods, okay? Uh, if you see that guy, I'm really in trouble now. They call him the mother of our country. Nothing about history books, too. They always call us vanishing Americans. But we're still around. When was the last time you seen a pilgrim, huh? I don't see the little guys with the hats and the guns anymore. <laughs> Pilgrims came to America 400 years ago, they were illegal aliens. <laughs> we used to call them whitebacks. <laughs> First 10 minutes they were here, they were unloading boats, building houses. And we were going, ah, excuse us, fellas. Um, you gonna stay overnight or something? <laughs> Piss you off and you have company and they never leave. <laughs> you know, we even had a meeting to determine if everybody should stay here or not. Why should we let the Europeans stay here? Yeah, I don't know. I don't see what harm they can do. Let them stay, you know. And they had the first Thanksgiving. You know, we, we didn't have that. They brought the holidays here. There are no Indian holidays in America. You know, what are you here for? We're here for Thanksgiving. What's Thanksgiving? Well, it's a holiday. We don't have holidays. Well, that's okay. We brought our own. Hey, bring in the holidays, you know. I mean, this is our land. We got Indian summer, but that's kind of a token thing. <laughs> this year I celebrated Halloween. I dressed my son like a white man. A briefcase and a hat. <laughs> Tommy from the government, son. Get everything. <laughs> and the first Thanksgiving, there was a lot of cultural exchange. It was never before. That's the first time the white man had ever seen popcorn brought to the first meal. You know? And thank God they brought us frying pans because it was a bitch to cook it before. <laughs> <laughs> then they brought us the Bible. We had all the land. And we got the Bible and they got all the land. I'll never forget it. When I was a little boy, my father took me on the mountaintop. He says, look at that beautiful landscape, son. You know, someday none of this will be yours. <laughs> You're going to love the next two guys. They're one of the most unique comedy duos of the 80s. Would you please help me welcome Lacasse and Seagull!